Ooh, this woman is taking the CELPIP exam and she's doing the reading part of the exam. Now the reading test has four parts. Okay, the first part is called the reading correspondence. Okay, reading correspondence. What does that mean? Correspondence means communication. Okay, so you're probably going to see um, a passage of writing that's probably a letter or an email that someone has written to someone else. And you have to figure out what it means and answer 11 questions on this passage. And you have 10 minutes to answer the question. Do you think you can do it? Well, in this lesson, I'm going to teach you exactly how you should do it. Okay, now if you want more lessons like this, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel right down there. Okay, so let's take a look at the question. This is what it's going to look like, okay? You're going to see a reading passage on the left hand side, and then over here, you're going to see some questions. In some ways, the reading test is easier than the speaking and the writing test because here, you have the answers, okay? You just have to choose the right answer. So if you don't know the right answer, then you can guess. Or if you're running out of time, then you can just guess, okay? It's just going to look like this. There's going to be a short sentence, and then you click here, and then you choose the right answer, okay? Mr. Walker is in Chile, in Calgary, in Vancouver, in Victoria. Okay, so it looks pretty easy, but actually it's quite challenging. Okay, it's challenging because there's difficult vocabulary. Okay, for sure there's going to be some words that you don't know. And they, they want to do that to test your skills, uh, your problem solving skills. Okay, so they're going to give you some words and phrases that are very advanced. So that's why the reading part is quite difficult. Also, you have to figure out what is going on in the passage. And they're not going to just tell you directly. Okay, so you have to be a detective and figure it out. Okay, like this. A question might be, John and Mary are friends, cousins, co-workers. Okay, this looks like a very easy question. But the passage of writing is not going to say, John and Mary are friends. Okay, that would be too easy. Then you could just look there, oh yeah, and choose the right option. Okay, it's not going to say it directly. So you need to figure out if they're friends, cousins, or coworkers. So it can be pretty tricky. Okay, now, what is your strategy for dealing with difficult vocabulary? If you see a word, that you don't know the meaning of, what do you do? Well, I think there's only two things you can do. You can try to guess the meaning from the context, okay? Or you can just forget about it and don't worry about it, okay? You only have 10 minutes on this question. So if you see a word or a phrase that you don't understand, uh, try to figure it out from the context, but if you can't, just forget about it and keep reading and, and just try to, as you, best as you can, to answer the questions. Okay, don't get, don't get uh, hung up on one word. Do you know what hung up means? Hung up means worried and where you're wasting all your time on one word. Okay, so what is the best strategy for answering this question? Well, I think a lot of people look at the questions first and then they read the passage. Okay, now that might be a good strategy for some reading questions, but I think in this case it's a bad strategy because you're going to waste too much time reading all the 11 questions. 11 questions and each of them will have like four answers. So it's not going to help you by reading 
the questions first. What I would say is the best strategy is just to relax, read the passage carefully, try to understand it, then start answering the questions and answer the easy ones first. Okay, if you don't know the answer to a question, just move on to the next one. Go through all of them, pick the ones that you know the answer to, and then if you have time, then you can go back and start looking for the answers in the passage again. And then if you have absolutely no time left, then just guess. Make sure you have an answer for all of them. Okay, so I think that's the best strategy. Let's take a look at a sample question here. Okay, let's read this together and then we'll answer some questions. Okay, so hi Stephanie. Thanks so much for being willing to handle everything while I'm gone, especially on such short notice. Since my mother's passing, I've been bombarded with messages from colleagues and friends. It's hard for me to stay on top of everything while trying to support my family emotionally and take time to grieve. I know it's going to be very hard to reschedule everyone in the coming weeks with the busy schedule we have right now, but I'm actually not worried about it at all because I know how organized you are. That's why I hired you in the first place, and I've never regretted that decision. I'm really sorry though to put you through this but I guess my family is more important than my client's teeth. I'm going to make it up to you somehow in the next few months. How about a balmy vacation in the tropics? Thanks again so much for all your hard work, uh, for all the hard work you do to keep our clients happy. Dave. Okay. P.S. Please apologize profusely to Mr. Walker because this is the second time I've had to postpone his root canal. Okay, so there was the letter or email. Okay, did you understand it? Well, there might have been some words or phrases that you didn't understand. Okay, for example, bombarded. Okay, since my mother's passing, I've been bombarded with messages. Can you figure out what that word means by the context? I think you should be able to figure it what it figure out what it means based on the context. I'm not going to tell you what it means yet. Okay, so let's take a look at the first question. Dave is a manager, doctor, dentist, or chef. What is he? What do you think? Well, he is a dentist. How do we know that? The, the passage doesn't say. Dave is a dentist. It doesn't say that we have to, we have to uh, investigate, we have to explore and infer the meaning from the passage. Okay, this is how we know. Look at this. Um, he says, I guess my family is more important than my client's teeth. His client's teeth. So that tells us that he is a dentist. Okay, so let's take a look at another question. Stephanie is Dave's friend, Dave's boss, Dave's sister, or Dave's receptionist. Which one? Well, it's this one, Dave's receptionist. How do we know? Well, this is how we know. Okay, there are a few clues in the passage. Um, Okay, first he says, he says, it will be hard to reschedule everyone. Okay, that means she is going to be involved in the rescheduling process. Um, and then he says, I know how organized you are. So she's very organized. And then he says, that's why I hired you. So he hired her because she was organized and she's going to reschedule. So, so that gives us a good clue that she's the receptionist, okay? Also, um, it says, he says here, thanks for all your hard work uh, and keeping our clients happy. Okay, so she is involved in keeping the clients happy. So, so we know that she is his receptionist. Okay, so let's take a look at another question. Dave is gone because 
he is on vacation, his mother died, he got married, he quit. Which one? I think you know. His mother died. His mother died. How do we know that his mother died? Well, it says right here, since my mother's passing. Passing means passed away. It's a nice way to say she died. Okay, since my mother's passing. I've been bombarded with messages. Okay, bombarded means like attacked. Messages are coming from everywhere. Okay, all his colleagues and friends are sending him condolences. Condolences are um, messages either, either verbal or written saying, I'm so sorry that your mother passed away. Okay, so he's getting bombarded with messages from all over the place. Okay, so let's take a look at another question. Stephanie will likely go on vacation to Russia, Norway, or Jamaica. Which one? How do we know? It's the answer is Jamaica. Okay, now let's take a look at why. So he says, I'm going to make it up to you somehow in the next few months. Okay, the reason he's saying that is because she's going to have to work very hard while he's gone for his mother's funeral. Okay, she's going to have to do a lot of extra work. So he wants to make it up to her. It means he wants to repay her, do something nice for all the hard work she's doing. So his idea is, how about a balmy vacation in the tropics? Okay, balmy means warm and sunny. And tropics means near the equator. Okay, we know that Russia and Norway are nowhere near the equator. But Jamaica is pretty close to the equator. Okay, so that's how we know she'll probably be going to Jamaica if we have those options, Russia, Norway, or Jamaica. Okay, let's take a look at another question. Mr. Walker is waiting for a business meeting, an interview, a tooth repair. Hmm, what do you think? The answer is a tooth repair. How do we know that? Well, let's take a look at this. P.S. P.S. stands for postscript. Sometimes if you forget to write something, you can just add it on to the end of an email and say, P.S. Please apologize profusely. Profusely means a lot, very much. Please apologize profusely to Mr. Walker because this is the second time I've had to postpone his root canal. Okay, so how do we know it's a tooth repair? It doesn't say here that Mr. Walker has any problems with his teeth. But look at this, root canal. Okay, it, even if you don't know what a root canal is, we can, uh, we can infer from this uh, little piece of writing here that Mr. Walker is one of his patients and and it, a root canal must mean some sort of tooth repair. Okay, that's what it means. A root, a root canal is a kind of tooth repair. Okay, so that's how we know that. So let's do a little bit of homework. Okay, John is over the moon about his promotion. What does that mean? Over the moon. Do you know what that means? He's over the moon about his promotion. A promotion means like a job promotion. You're at work and your boss says, wow, great work. I'm giving you a promotion. Okay, so John is happy, sad, thankful, disgusted. He's over the moon about his job. What do you think it means? Let me know down there in the comments and I hope that's helpful for you. Uh, I think the reading part of the exam, uh, it could be easy if you're a good reader, but it could also be very challenging if your vocabulary isn't that good. Uh, vocabulary is so important. That's why at Mad English TV, most of the lessons I make are vocabulary lessons. Because if you, if you miss or if you don't understand a word, then sometimes it's very hard to understand the rest of the context. 
Okay, so I have a lot of vocabulary lessons on my channel. If you want to improve your vocabulary, just watch some of my lessons on vocabulary. Okay, so let me know your answer down there in the comments, and I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.